an American folk painter born on April 4th, 1780 in Attleboro, Pennsylvania. This was during the time that the American Revolution took place. The death of his mother when he was just 18 months old, and the absence of his father, a British loyalist, for reasons tied to the aftermath of the Revolutionary War, abandoned and parentless, he was taken in by family friends, known as the Twinning Family, where he would later be introduced to and raised into Quakerism. At the age of 13, Hicks was apprenticed to coachmakers known as the Tomlinson Brothers, where he would learn to sign, coach, and become an ornamental painter. This was essentially a milestone in Hicks's life as an artesian. He spent the following seven years learning to paint. When Hicks was 20, in 1800, he departed from the Tomlinson firm to become an independent painter and do his own thing. He moved to Milford, Pennsylvania in 1801 to work for another coachmaker, Joshua C. Canby. His interest with his Quaker roots grew strongly as he grew to dislike his lifestyle and artistry ways. This helped shape his character and helped mark the beginning of his attendance at Quaker meetings. In 1803, Hicks joined the Society of Friends. In 1812, he became known as one of the most popular and leading ministers of his time. After hitting a rocky road, he decided to support his family of four and wife by preserving his livelihood, not as a Quaker minister, but as a Quaker artist. Some of Edward Hicks's artwork includes Noah's Ark, the Cornell Farm, the Falls of Niagara, Washington at the Delaware, the Declaration of Independence, and the Landing of Columbus. Quakers, also known as the Religious Society of Friends, was founded by George Fox in the mid-17th century in England. The Society of Friends took its name from the New Testament Gospel of John, which says, You are my friends if you do whatever I command. John 15, 12-15 The group consists of Christians who believe in the presence of God within each person, often referred to as the inner light. Quakers exercised their personal commitment to God and their belief that generous deeds are necessary in life. There was a time when Quakerism was not considered legal and people were often imprisoned for simply being part of it. This was because the official religion of England at the time was the Church of England. The Quakers believed that there shouldn't be any religious rituals or sacraments. They also refused to fight in any war, believed in religious freedom for all, and were against slavery. William Penn was born on October 14, 1644, in London, England. He is best known for founding the province of Pennsylvania, the British North American colony that is now the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. His father was an admiral in the English Navy as well as a wealthy landowner. Penn was born into a wealthy family, received an excellent education, and had many resources with the help of his wealth to help him become successful. He attended Oxford University when he was 16 in 1660. At the age of 22, Penn became a Quaker. It wasn't exactly the simplest thing for him because he was arrested numerous times for attending Quaker meetings. Of course, due to his father's fame, he was released shortly after, but was also kicked out of his house by his father because his father did not approve of his beliefs. He wasn't with the injustice that Quakers were facing, so he turned to the King of England King Charles II, to propose a plan. That plan involved Quakers leaving England to settle in the Americas. In essence, it was a religious refuge. The king approved and gave Penn a charter to e execute his plan. The land was first called Sylvania, meaning woods, and then changed to Pennsylvania to honor Penn's father, whom the, kin the king felt he owed a lot to. Penn wanted Pennsylvania to be a free land, free for all religions, and people who faced injustice because of the religion's religion they practiced. He also wanted peace with the Native Americans and hoped that they could live together as neighbors and friends. This piece by Edward Hicks is inspired by Benjamin West's work, also titled Penn's Treaty with the Indians. What is being shown in both artworks 
is the same theme of William Penn's 1682 treaty with the Lenny Lenape tribe. Although Hicks had other works at the time, he was well known for his series of the Peaceable Kingdoms, painted between 1820 to his death. Although all the artworks carry the same name, none of them are identical. Hicks uses certain patterns in all of his work. He Hicks creates depth through objects and scale, and secondarily by light and shadows. He uses foreground, middle ground, and background to show depth, and they are all defined by the objects around and in the image, such as animals, the landscape, and humans. What inspired Edward Hicks to carry out the same theme throughout the Peaceable Kingdom series was biblical passage. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Isaiah 11. The Peaceable Kingdom artwork I will be focusing on is this one, painted somewhere between 1830 through 1840. This artwork serves to express the message of peace that Hicks is trying to portray while making references to the Bible and incorporating important symbols in history, in particular that involving the Quakers. Hicks was also inspired by the Quaker William Penn and his treaty with the Indians, which is visible in the background as copy detail from a famous painting by U.S. artist Benjamin West, as said before. In this adaptation, Hicks takes the original story from the Bible and ties it into American history. The scene takes place in Pennsylvania. In the center of the crowd is William Penn, founder of Pennsylvania and also a fellow Quaker. The way Hicks ties the original story with American history is by showing that it is not Christ who arrives, instead it is William Penn and his comrades depicting the signing of the Treaty of Shakamaxin with the Lenni Lenape Indians. This was the agreement that established friendship and peace between the cultures. Most of the scenes in the Peaceable Kingdom are painted outdoors, in which the light source is the sun or the sky. The color schemes of his work are simple, and within a painting such as that, many of the colors have the same warmth or brown tone. They include reds, yellows, and often greens. This is another way that Hicks tries to convey peace. Throughout this painting, his animals have human expressions, and his human figures appear stiff and doll-like. His landscapes are correct in perspective, hazy in tone, and sometimes luminous in color. These paintings are equally balanced to reflect actions taking place between groups of people and animals within the painting. Hicks used several shades of brown, yellow, and white to suggest this forest scene. We see the animals clearly, for they stand out against the background. The distant landscape is painted in light colors. Hicks painted each detail carefully. We see the spots on the leopard and the texture of the lion's mane. The animal representations are not created equal. Some of the animals look realistic, and some do not. The painting features three children surrounded by wild animals in the foreground and the colonists and Native Americans in the background. Hicks conveyed meaning through symbols and depicted predators like the lions and prey, such as lambs, next to each other to show a theme of peace. For my artworks, I chose two photographs, both taken in the evening, that share both warm colors. To me, these photographs show a sense of peace. That peace can be acquired even in the, in the loudest environments, or the most pro problematic, or even just in harsh times.